This video is about using the three index laws with whole numbers. Now index laws refer to indices or powers, so let's see if we can uncover these index laws by first of all doing some calculations with some powers. So I've got 7 to the power of 5 times 7 cubed. And then let's work this out on a calculator and see what it actually comes to. Okay, So we need to put in 7, then we can use this x with a little box next to it to get the power, so power of 5. Then you need to press the right button to come out of the power before you put in the time sign. Then you can put in 7 to the power of 3. Okay, and press equals, we get 5,764,801. Okay, so quite a large answer. Now I'd like to do another simpler calculation. I'd just like to do 7 to the power of 8. Okay, so let's put that in 7 to the power of 8. And let's see what we get with that. So again, we get the same thing. Look, 5,764,801. So that must mean that five to the power, oh, sorry, seven to the power of five times seven cubed is equal to seven to the power of eight. Now let's see if we can understand why that might be. Now what does seven to the power of five really mean? It means seven times itself five times. Then we've got to multiply by 7 cubed, which means 7 times itself 3 times. Now if we look at this calculation as a whole, 7 is being multiplied by itself altogether 8 times, so 7 to the power of 8. And you can see, can't you, that because we had 5 7s here and 3 7s here, altogether we've got 5 plus 3, we've got 8 7s, so 7 to the power of 8. So let's see if this works with another example. So here is 5 cubed times 5 to the power of 4. 5 cubed would be 5 times 5 times 5. 5 to the power of 4 would be 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. And so altogether we've got 5 to the power of 7. Okay, so again we can see that the power of 3 and the power of 4 end up becoming added to give you a power of 7. Right, now if we're going to write this down as a rule, we're going to need to use a bit of algebra so that we can write it down generally. So what we can write then is that n to the power of a so that n here is 7 and a is 5, times n to the power of b, so n here is 7 and b is 3, is n to the power of a plus b. So that's showing the two powers, the 5 and the 3, getting added together to give us the 8 altogether. Okay? Now the algebra can be a bit complicated here, so let's put, a, uh, let's put a little reminder underneath that when we are multiplying two numbers to different powers, then we can add the powers. Okay. So let's put that away for the time being and let's see if we can find out another rule to do with division. Okay, so here is 6 to the power of 8 divided by 6 cubed. Okay, so on a calculator, let's put in 6 to the power of 8. Then we need the right hand button. Then we can put in uh, divided by 6 to the power of 3. Okay, and that comes to 7,776 this time. Okay, now you can probably guess what the other calculation I want to do here is. We're going to do 6 to the power of 5. Maybe you can see where the 5 comes from. So 6 to the power of 5. Okay, and yes, that does indeed come out to 7,776. Okay, so they are equal. So again, we found that. 6 to the power of 8 divided by 6 cubed is 6 to the power of 5. Now to understand exactly why this works, let's think a little bit about how cancelling fractions works. So suppose we had 8 over 32. I'm sure you know that that would cancel down to 4 sixteenths. And again we could cancel it down to 2 eighths. And then we could cancel it down to a quarter. Okay? And in each case we're dividing the top and bottom of our fraction by 2. Now another way of thinking about what's going on here, look, is that 8 is 2 times 2 times 2, and 32 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Now when we cancel down, when we divide the top and bottom by 2, that's kind of the same as just not multiplying by the final 2 here, look, because that then leaves us with 2 times 2, which is 4, and 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is 16. Okay, so Dividing the top and bottom by 2 is the same as knocking off one of these factors of 2 from the top and bottom. And then we can do that again. Okay, If we knock off a two, 2 from the top and bottom, we're left with 2 over 2 times 2 times 2, so 2 over 8. 
and we can do it one final time we can get rid of that two and this one now we're left without anything on the uh, top here so we should pop a one in there so finally that we've ended up with one over four let's see how that might apply to our example here okay so six to the power of eight is six times itself eight times now for divide let's write this as a fraction divided by six to the power of three so that's six times itself three times now if we follow the process that we did here we can cancel this fraction down by removing a six from the top and bottom then we can remove another factor of six and then a final factor of six okay so we've taken three sixes away from the bottom three away from the top and actually we can see that what we're left with there is six times itself five times okay so that's why we get the same answer with six to the power of eight divided by six cubed and six to the power of five now of course in terms of a rule here I'm sure you can see that what's happening to the powers this time is that because we're dividing the powers get subtracted okay let's put these two rules into practice then okay so here are some example questions so write these as a single power of 8. So I've got 8 to the 5 and 8 to the 6. So remember what that means is 8 times itself 5 times multiplied by 8 times itself 6 times. Now you could count these all up or we could try and use the rule directly. So we've got 8 to the power of and then we have to add the powers. So 5 plus 6 which is 11. And indeed you can see that from here can't we? 8 to the power of 11. Second example we've got 8 to the power of 12 divided by 8 to the power of 4. So if we write that out, that's 8 times itself 12 times, look at them all, divided by 8 times itself 4 times, and then we can remove 4 of these 8s from the bottom, 4 of the 8s from the top, see what we've got left. Now applying the rule directly, we would have to subtract the powers, so 12, take away 4, and that comes to 8 to the power of 8, which is what we can see here. Okay, and then part C. So here it looks like we're going to have to use both of the rules. First of all, we should use the multiplying rule on the top, okay, where we need to add the powers. So that will be 8 to the power of 10, 4 plus 6. Then we can divide by 8 cubed. And this dividing obviously is the same as the dividing here, so the powers need to be subtracted. And that's going to leave us with 8 to the 10 minus 3, or 8 to the 7. OK, so time for you to do a little bit of practice here then. So pause the video, have a go at writing down the answers to these, and then when you restart the video, I will go through the answers. OK, great. So 4 squared times 4 to the 5, add the powers, 4 to the 7. 4 to the 10 divided by 4 squared, subtract the powers, so 4 to the 8. And then in this case, we need to first of all add the powers, which will give us 4 to the 15 divided by 4 to the 5 and then we need to subtract the powers which will leave us with 4 to the 10. <coughs> okay so we're supposed to have three index laws and so far we've only uncovered two of them so let's take a look at a slightly different situation so suppose we have 3 to the power of 4 and then squared okay well let's think for a minute what squaring means squaring means multiplied by itself so in other words, what we've got here is 3 to the power of 4 multiplied by itself. Let's write that out. 3 to the power of 4 multiplied by itself, 3 to the power of 4. OK, well, when we look at it this way, we can see that actually we can just use this first index law and add the powers to get 3 to the power of 8. Let's look at a second example with a power inside and outside a bracket. So we've got 9 to the power of 5 and then cubed. OK, well, what does cubing mean? Well, it means multiplied by itself three times. So in other words, we've got 9 to the power of 5 times itself times itself. Now we can apply the multiplying uh, law, the first index law here, where we need to add the powers 5 and 5 and then another 5 to get 9 to the power of 15. OK, okay so you can see here, can't you, that because we had to have, nine, we had to have the power of 5 three times, we ended up with 3 times 5, or 15, as our final power. It's the same here. We ended up with 4 times 2, or 8, as our final power. OK, so the third index law is this one. When you have a power inside and outside a bracket, actually, in fact, they get multiplied. And I haven't written a time sign here because we don't need a time sign when we use algebra. OK, 
So in this case we multiply the powers. Okay, so let's look at some examples that bring in this final rule as well then. And what I am going to suggest here is that actually you get used to doing what we've just done whenever possible and writing it out uh, what it means. So applying the second power to see what it means and then you can then you can generally use the first index law to sort things out. So in this case 7 to the power of 5 and then squared it means 7 to the power of 5 times itself add the powers that's 7 to the 10. Okay in other words we've got 5 and 2 multiplied together. Here we've got 7 cubed to the power of 4. Well we could write that out as 7 cubed times 7 cubed times 7 cubed times 7 cubed. If we add those powers we're going to have 7 to the power of 12 but we also have to multiply by 7 to the power of 5 so if we add up all of the powers we'll end up with 7 to the power of 17. Okay time for you to practice so here are some questions for you to have a go at. Pause the video and when you've answered them restart. Okay so first one 11 squared and then cubed means 11 squared times itself three times add the powers you end up with 11 to the 6 might have got there directly using this law here we probably want to use this law to speed things up so we'll have 11 to the 15 multiplied by 11 to the 8 and then to simplify finally we need to add these two powers so that will be 11 to the 23 here with the top of the fraction we need to apply the third index law to give us 11 to the power of 12 and that's divided by 11 to the 7 so we then need to subtract the powers to give us 11 to the power of 5. Okay, so we've seen some, uh, we've seen all of three of these index laws in action. Let's just look at a few things that could potentially trip us up if we hadn't seen them before. Okay, so here, write these as a single power of 6. I've got 6 to the 7 times 6 to the minus 2. Now we might not be quite sure what 6 to the minus 2 means. Okay, it is a number, it is, uh, it is okay to have negative powers, but even if we're not totally sure what it means, we can still apply the index law and get an answer. Okay, we can do 6 to the power of and then add the powers, so 7 plus minus 2. And then we need to think about what happens when you add a negative number. Well, adding a negative is the same as subtracting, so this is 6 to the 7 minus 2, or in other words, 6 to the 5. Here, okay, nothing peculiar about these numbers, 6 to the 4 and 6 to the 9. Now, because we're dividing, we need to do 6 to the 4, take away 9. And there we go, we see our answer is 6 to the minus 5. But again, that's, that's okay, we can have negative powers. Now, in this final example, we can also see uh, a decimal power coming in. And you can have fractional or decimal powers. Now, because this is a decimal, it's not obvious how we would write out uh, 6 cubed times itself a quarter of a time. So we have to use the rule directly here which tells us that the power inside and outside the bracket need to be multiplied. So this will be 6 to the 3 times 0 0.25, which is 6 to the 0 0.75. OK, so here is one final challenge for you to have a go at. Pause the video, give it a good go, and see what you get as a final answer. OK, so first of all, we should deal with the first term here. Multiplying 1.5 by 3 gives us 3 to the 4.5 and then we're yet to multiply by the 3 squared and divide by 3 to the 10. Then we can apply the first index law to add the powers and we'll have 3 to the 6.5 still divided by 3 to the 10 and then we can use the second index law to subtract the powers 6.5 take away 10 which actually is minus 3.5. So the answer here is 3 to the minus 3.5.